Good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to the uh, live event this uh, evening. Um, this is the uh, welcome evening for the new Silver Tie cohort. Um, many of you have seen me online already um, so far with the YouTube live sessions, but if you didn't, you've not met me yet. I'm Andy Calvert. I'm assistant head teacher and responsible for transition. Um, this evening, I've got Mrs. Pennell, the head teacher, to talk to you about the vision of the school and some of the organisational issues, and also Miss Bishop, the um, deputy head teacher, who's going to talk a bit more about personal development and how we organise the school. So, um, just a few um, housekeeping rules. Um, obviously, it's a live event, um, so it may go down. Um, hopefully, it won't. But if you do, just please bear with us. Um, it should come back up. If you have any questions, please pop them into the Q and A bar there and we'll do what we can to answer those either this evening or at a later date we will get back to you. I've got Mrs Varley um, on the transition.co.uk sorry transition at ilkleygs.co.uk uh, website address so if you've got any um, uh, questions that are personal please use that uh, email address um, and we'll Mrs Varley will be able to answer those in the background as well. Um, so without further ado um, I'm just going to swap over to Mrs Pennell, who is our head teacher, who will take you through uh, this evening. OK, just bear with me a second. OK, Carly. OK, good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome, as Mr Calvert said, to our new year seven cohort, our Silver Ties for next year. I'm really delighted that you are joining us in September. Um, as Mr Calvert said, my name is Mrs Pennell, head teacher. Um, of course, we'd much prefer that we were talking to you in B Hall in person, um, but I still want you to all know that we're really delighted that you are joining us and we're really looking forward to getting to know you students and of course your families. Starting secondary school is a really exciting and memorable time, um, hopefully the start of a, a memorable and enjoyable journey that will last seven years at IGS as you start your secondary education. The goal for you is very much to be as successful as you can be. Um, you all have, every single one of you, has the potential to be remarkable and to achieve great things. And I firmly believe that through teamwork, through working hard, through working together, staff, students and parents and carers and having that positive mindset, we can collectively achieve so much more. Um, your journey will be a really interesting one. Um, you know, there'll be lots of opportunities for academic development, for personal growth, um, developing existing interests, finding new passions, forging new friendships, and for sharing and celebrating lots of success along the way. As parents then, I'll talk to you a little bit um, to start with, what can you expect from IGS? And if you listen to our presentation back in October, some of the things that I will say now very much um, were said back then. Um, first of all, we are definitely a really caring school. It's really important to us here at IGS that learners um, enjoy school, but that they flourish when we know they feel happy, when they feel safe, when they feel listened to and valued. Um, and we work really hard to create that warm, inclusive, tolerant environment within school. And we champion values such as kindness and respect um, and empathy and we prioritise student wellbeing. We've got a really strong pastoral team at IGS with a dedicated and experienced head of year. The students will have Mrs Walsh um, as their head of year when they join in September, but also very well supported by a, a student um, support manager, Mrs Barley, who's a dedicated year seven specialist, and also a progress and experience leader, um, Mr Willett, who joins the team um, as well. We put young people first. You know, we are caring, we are compassionate, and we always look to provide the very best opportunities and education for our students. Um, academic excellence, I won't go into to detail about that, but we are unashamedly proud of the academic success 
and our GCSE and A level results clearly testify to that. Um, clearly, we're proud of the fact that students at GCSE, um, one in four of our grades tend to be at the very highest grades, eight and nine, um, nearly half of our grades at grades seven to nine. But what really is most important to us is the progress that students make, regardless of their academic ability and regardless of their starting point. And the fact that we are in the top 10% of schools nationally for progress does show that, you know, again, with support, with challenge, students will fulfil their academic potential and will achieve their very best. We're not complacent. Um, you know, we look forward continually to review what we do, to make improvements, um, to innovate our provision, whether that be through curriculum development, through investing in staff training, through embracing new technology and looking for new opportunities. And of course, you know, we firmly believe that if students, if our students are going to be properly prepared to live and thrive and work and lead in tomorrow's world, then their academic success has got to be as important as their personal development and the shaping of the character. So we can make sure they are very much the best versions of themselves. What did Ofsted say about us? Uh, again, I think you've probably seen this slide before, so I won't dwell on it, um, but we are judged to be outstanding in all areas. And again, just key highlights for me, the fact that staff do go the extra mile, that teachers do have high expectations, that our support for students is very strong and welfare of students is an absolute priority, um, including, of course, support for students that do have additional challenges and additional barriers to their learning. And whilst that Ofsted report was back in 2017 now, those judgments have also been confirmed increasingly recently by our peer review processes. So students, um, what can you expect from IGS? I can guarantee as head that whatever your interests, there will be something for you to try. Um, there'll be a range of trips and visits for you to enjoy. There'll be opportunities for you, both within and uh, beyond your lessons, to get to know lots of brilliant new people. And you'll be supported to succeed, um, both in lessons and at social time. Um, the fact that we are an iPad school means that there'll be loads of support for you online as well, whether that's through one of our apps that we use, Shobi, where we um, put upload our resources um, for our teaching, or whether that be a member of staff at the end of an email to answer a question. And we'll be there for you when things go wrong, and, and sometimes they will, um, but we learn from our mistakes and that's part of growing up. And the positive lessons we take from our mistakes helps us to grow stronger as a, as a person. But we will challenge you. I will challenge you to be the very best you can be. We have high expectations of you. I have, I have high expectations of myself. I have high expectations of the staff that work at IGS. And, um, you know, like I said, you are capable of achieving amazing things and we'll challenge you and support you to be the very best you can be so that you do achieve your personal best. And that's a phrase you'll hear a lot at IGS. Again, you've seen this vision statement before. We do want you to achieve your personal best, whatever that may be. But we also want you to, you know, be equipped with the confidence, with the resilience, with the skills um, to make a positive difference, both to yourself, but also to the lives of, of, of others as part of contributing to society. And we will give you lots of opportunities to make a positive difference. Um, for example, through our charity fundraising, we are prolific fundraisers here at IGS. Um, and there's a few examples there on the screen. So whether that's walking 70, 79 million steps, which we did collectively, virtually walking around the world to raise money for a local family, whether it's raising money for children in need, donating to food banks, um, writing an anti-bullying publication or helping out with a community cleanup. There's lots of opportunities for you to think of others, to make a difference and have fun along the way. 
I'll now move on to then just talking a little bit about the organisation within the school in terms of the curriculum. So there are three bands um, in, in the school, in a lower school, I, G and S, and those bands basically help us organise the timetable. Now, in all subjects, uh, with the exception of um, maths, maths is the only subject where we do have setting in year seven. And um, what will happen it, from September is that for the most part of the half term, students will be in their tutor groups for maths, and then they will be set just before um, the October half term is the intention. All of the lessons are mixed ability, um, mainly taught in tutor groups, although in um, practical subjects like technology and PE, you will be uh, with students from across your band. You will be placed in a uh, form which is either French or Spanish, um, and I think Mr. Calvert and Mrs Farley have worked very hard behind the scenes to try and accommodate any language preference that we were told in advance. Um, and we made that decision several years ago to have a focus on one language rather than two. And we've seen real acceleration of progress in a single language because we haven't reduced the amount of curriculum time. We've kept that the same, but it's focused on um, one language, as I say, rather than two. So later on this week, you will be all finding out who your tutor is and which band you are in. So I've put the colours there on the screen. So I band is yellow, G band red and S band blue. Um, and you can see from the screen there the fact that the teachers um, and the forms are um, identified by their initials. Um, and then we have a focus on either Spanish um, which is the case for Mr Clark's form or Miss Renard's form, for example, or French in the case of, of Mr Walton. And I do try and make sure, and I think that it is the case next year, that all tutors will teach their tutor group um, for uh, a specialist subject. So, for example, Mr Knight is an English specialist and he will teach his form 7JCK English. Uh, Mr McKenzie is a, spa, uh, a science specialist and he will teach his form science. Um, Miss Maguire actually teaches mainly in post 16, but she will also teach her, um, her tutor group citizenship. And I think that's really important because it allows the tutors to really get to know their students um, very well in the classroom. Um, and that's really important to us that they know the students inside out. So as I say, um, I'm sure you're anticipating receiving notification of, of which tutor group you're in and our hope is that that will be sent out to you this week. In terms of our school day then, we do operate a six period day. Um, we expect you all to be on site by 8.25 for a prompt start in registration at 8.30. Now, the only day we don't operate a six period day is on a Wednesday when we do have um, an early finish at 2.30 and that's to facilitate staff um, professional development. So um, as you can see there, um, we have two periods, then break um, and then uh, we are having and continuing with a split lunch situation moving into September. So year seven will have the early lunch. So you will have uh, another lesson in between break and lunch, um, followed by um, three periods afterwards. In terms of our curriculum, then you'll have an exciting range of lessons um, which will be taught in all cases by specialist teachers. There are 16 different subjects which make up the year seven curriculum. Um, so lots of opportunities for different um, subjects to study, opportunities for different types of learning, um, practical lessons alongside more traditional subjects. So, you know, you will learn how to use a Bunsen burner, you will handle chemicals, you will um, investigate and um, microscope slides in science. 
your cooking um, DT in technology um, and you know you will develop your creative skills in subjects like music and art um, and drama and technology for example and in PE we're very lucky that we're positioned where we are because you'll be able to run on the moors as part of cross country you will be able to swim in the pool and develop your skills in a whole wide range of subjects so just having a look at an example um, six period day timetable with the shorter day clearly there on a Wednesday so you will receive a copy of your timetable in September a paper copy when you join us and we always recommend that perhaps a couple of extra copies are taken so you can put one on the fridge and um, but you'll also have um, your timetable on your iPad so when you get your iPad um, the timetable will sync to your um, Outlook calendar um, on your emails and so you'll always have a copy there as well. We do have some double lessons. Now you might expect double lessons in more creative subjects. So here, for example, in PE, in DT and art, but we also do have some double lessons in subjects like uh, maths. Maths has one double a fortnight, science and English, and that just allows us as well to vary the learning. One of the things that students are often a little bit nervous about is the scale and the, the size of the school. And I know you haven't had the opportunities to look round in the way that we would have liked ordinarily. Uh, but let me assure you that within a few days of starting, you will be able to absolutely make your way around the site. We are a large school. We will have over 2000 students from September. We'll have over 200 staff and um, students you will be one of 318 silver ties when you join us in September and I know that might sound daunting but like I say uh, another way to look at it is just there's lots of new friends um, as, uh, potentially to make as a result. We do send home tracking information uh, to parents to keep um, parents and carers updated about the progress students are making um, and that includes both um, information on effort but also um, we break down information from class charts which Ms Bishop will talk about later in the presentation. Um, there's once a year we send a report home that's been written by the tutor and there's two opportunities to meet staff as well so one um, parents evening that is very early on in the academic year where uh, parents and carers meet the tutor uh, and just make sure that students have settled it's very much focused on the settling in process and then later on in the academic year a chance to meet the academic teachers um, based on the timetable. Now we haven't yet decided whether those parents evenings will be remote or in school or a combination of the two and we'll update you in due course. So I've been talking quite a lot there about, you know, tracking and timetable and subjects. Is it all work? Absolutely not. Um, you know, there's lots of opportunities that we have to succeed outside of lessons. You know, with so many clubs and activities um, in traditional sports like rugby and football and basketball, dance, etc., um, athletics, but also in the arts and technology. We have drama club. We have a behind the scenes drama club, the backstages who support school productions, you know, a samba band, orchestra, pop group um, under normal circumstances. And again, things like coding club, creative writing, uh, strategy games. So whatever your interest, there'll be something for you to, to try, um, something new to experience, and like I said before, a chance to make you know, new friendships. There will also be opportunities to develop your leadership skills, you know, whether that is on the student council or the sports council, but also we have subject ambassadors, we have fundraising ambassadors, wellbeing leaders, Again, that's not something that we just reserve for post 16, sixth form students. We very much give you opportunities right from the start in year seven. And we've even run our own model United Nations. So if you do fancy, you know, stepping into the shoes of a world leader, um, you know, and discussing global issues, then there's an opportunity to do that too. So 
Just some examples there of the types of clubs that we run either after school or at lunchtime. And we also run a huge range of trips and visits and that's trips and visits both in the UK, but also abroad under normal circumstances too. So we have language trips to France and Spain, geography field trips to Iceland. We have European and American ski trips. Um, cultural tours to places like Switzerland and Poland and a whole range of UK based activities as well. You know, at the end of each year, we run what is called our challenge and celebration week, and that's to reward you for a whole range of, um, you know, for a hard work um, that has been carried out across the year. Um, you know, in year seven, again, normally we will have our circus adventures to practice and develop circus skills and a day at a theme park in year eight we hope you'll be able to go to london and enjoy a four-day residential there and in year nine we have a week of um, adventures in the in the lake district there's also lots of local activities as well that we organize and our, we're very fortunate that our PTA kindly provide a bursary to support families um, who require fun, financial help so that those trips are open to a, a wide range of students. And I think the first trip we look to plan uh, for year seven is very early on in September um, when you visit Nell Bank to develop team skit, a teamwork um, and meet people within your band IG or S. So just a few pictures there showing a range of things that we do. Some of those pictures are from Nell Bank. Now, I have gone through the first part of the presentation without mentioning coronavirus and deliberately so, even though it stopped us doing the transition events that we wanted to do and having this meeting in person. Um, unfortunately, it is going to disrupt a little bit further and, our, and it does affect the return in September. So parents care, as you are probably aware from the media, that secondary schools are required to offer for students um, to on-site lateral flow tests um, at the start of the autumn term. Um, that's a one-off event. It's very similar if you have um, uh, children in older years to what we had to do in March when we had to run three supervised lateral flow tests. Now they are slightly different. They are going to be based on nasal swabbing only rather than the uh, throat and nose as previously. Um, and as a result of that, the DfE have given schools the discretion to stagger the start in the first week back. Now, because of the scale of IGS, we will have to deliver 4,000, more than 4,000 tests potentially in the first few days back. Um, it does mean that there's a slight change to the start in September. So on Tuesday, the uh, 7th of September, our new year seven will come into school only for their supervised tests. Now you will be contacted with a specific time and we do have to get consent from you as parents carers, which we will be sending out over the next week and a half or so. And then as I say, they'll be allocated at a certain time and then they will go back home. Should their test be negative, then of course everyone can come back um, on Wednesday the 8th of September, um, so a day later than, than what we'd hoped um, to carry out activities as normal. And we are staggering the start with the other year groups and again if you've got children in older years you'll be notified of the dates within the next couple of days. So the first full day in school will now be Wednesday the 8th of September. Um, it's, it's not the start we wanted, you know, clearly we didn't want um, the, the situation to be come into our sports hall and, and let's carry out a supervised test, but it's nothing to worry about. There'll be lots of friendly faces there to greet you and then hopefully we can start as normal and as planned um, the following day. So I'm now going to hand over to Miss Bishop, who's our deputy head with responsibility for behaviour and attitudes. We'll talk about um, other aspects of our provision. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Um, right, let's 
just get this on to present mode. Okay. Right. I'm here to talk. Good evening, everyone. I'm here to talk about um, the the bigger picture, and we've heard a lot of exciting things about um, tie values and uh, about all the extracurricular trips that are going on. So these are our tie values. And uh, Mr. Calvert will have gone into this with you um, in in previous talks, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about the development of our tie values. They were apps. They were actually designed by students and staff. So year seven, and you're really lucky as year seven to have silver ties. It's the best colour out of all, the, all of the ties. But year seven, as you can see from the um, strap line at the top of the year seven tie there. It's all about being a super learner. And we have six words every year which students need to exemplify. So you'll see there from um, the words in the silver tie, but it's all about students being inquisitive and involved and motivated and organized, resilient and responsible. And there'll be lots of opportunities throughout the first year to um, to demonstrate those values through a variety of activities. We call our behaviour system personal best and we have personal best time on a Wednesday morning with tutors and, and that's really, really important because as you can see, as students move through the school, that becomes their journey. So their journey right the way through school, um, being a great team player, being a rounded individual and all the values in the tie below are really, really, really important. OK, I'm just going off on. Um, I'm just going to share content again because I think I haven't got shared content. Excuse me a second. Um, OK. Mr Calvert, are you OK to give me? Yeah, we've got um, the content on from Mrs Pennell, so if you just carry on, we'll do the transition from the slide. Okay, okay. that's fine. Right, OK. So. OK, so um, being all of those tie values, um, sorry to, to, um, to interrupt there, I was just slightly confused that you weren't perhaps seeing what we've got, but I think maybe you can now. So all of those tie values um, show that journey through schools. So if you can move through to the next slide for me, please. Um, now, our personal best time is on a Wednesday morning and, and that's 35 minutes for um, students to spend with their tutor. And that relationship is really important because Let's not forget moving up from um, primary schools, which are very small and you often have one teacher. That is the stability that your um, child will receive on a daily basis and in particular that extended time on a Wednesday. And that tutor very often will be the person who stays with them throughout their journey through school. As you'll see from the diagram there, um, term one is all, all about being an exceptional citizen and making a positive difference. And that's the, the blue um, arrow at the bottom there of the slide. Term two is about being a successful student and term three is about being an excellent friend through teamwork. And we work through those tie values and we really make sure that we hone in on those personal developments, those personal attributes that students will develop throughout their time with us. We have some amazing things in the tutor group programme. And of course, we also take time to reflect on current topics and, and, and issues that might be happening in the in the world as we speak and also of course to consider mental health and well-being that being something which we focused on a lot as a school recently when everything has gone uh, gone on so that gives us a little bit of freedom to to maybe develop those relationships further within tutor groups and also exemplify those values so on to the next slide then um year 11 sorry year seven tutor groups are split in between uh, split between um, those I, G and S bands. And I did have a question earlier on on the chat bar saying, um, are I, G and S bands by ability? Absolutely not. It's a it's a timetabling constraint um, and it just, just enables us to be able to block particular sessions. So students are organised into mixed ability tutor group and they're carefully engineered um, because they are mixed by primary background and ability. And as Mrs. Panel said earlier on, the aim is to foster new friendships. That's a positive thing being in tutor groups with, with people you may not know yet, because you will do by the end of the year very well. 
And the Personal Best programme then aims at supporting students throughout that transition period and over the years. Mrs Walsh, who will um, come on after me to introduce herself, will be a key person in your child's life. And Mrs Varley, who's very experienced in being a student support and transition manager, she will be there and they will be there all of the time. And as Mrs Pennell said earlier on, we also welcome Mr Willett as progress and experience leader. And he's someone who, who very much looks at um, effort and attitude and really makes sure that students know what they're doing. And they're monitored really carefully. Student support is often provided. I've put that in yellow there because in the normal circumstances when we can have mixed bubbles, um, then year 12 leaders are assigned to each tutor group in order to help them settle in to act as mentors and role models. Um, it's quite daunting going up to a big school, I know. So rest assured that the supervision will be um, just within their bubble. They have a designated year seven court, so they won't need to play football with the bigger boys and girls, but they can have their own um, separate area. Um, and then at, in, in um, wet, in wet circumstances, uh, then they will be supervised in, in particular classrooms and indoor areas. Thank you very much, Ms. Calvert. If we can go on to the next one. So organisation is really key and I would urge you please to make sure that you pay really careful attention to equipment, uniform, valuables. Please, please, please look after your iPad. It's incredibly valuable and students are lost without their iPads because they are essential learning tools throughout the day. Um, don't forget, as well as iPads, then students also need earphones as well. And, and increasingly in classrooms, we are asking students to watch videos or listen to pieces of music. So earphones are, are just as important as, um, as iPads, please. The last one on there, bags, please make sure that it is, it, it is exactly what it's saying on here. But in addition to that, it would be really good if there was something identifiable visibly on the bag because um, very often students pick up bags when they leave them um, to go into the lunch halls and pick up someone's bag who, who, who looks the same as theirs. So please, 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 it would be great if you had something that is identifiable, identifiable as your child's bag to avoid this happening. And just finally, finishing off then from me, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit. I'm not going to dwell too much on this, but um, the food here is amazing. Um, Organisation from um, between home and school communication, first of all. Are we OK to move on slides, please? I think that's the next one. Brilliant. Um, for absences, please make sure you do communicate with us because we do have an attendance officer who will send school comms out in the morning if, if your child doesn't appear in school. We take safeguarding very, very, very seriously um, and need to know where students are at all times. So a quick plea, please, if you could arrange medical appointments outside of school hours and, and remember that holidays in school time are not authorised. Um, we do aim for all students to have at least a 90, 97% attendance level, although of course we completely understand that sometimes, and especially as shown this year, um, there may be some things which are, are stopping that and we will always have personalised contact with you to make sure um, that we know what the situation is and we are fully informed of where we are. But please be aware we do use school comms as the most effective communication tool. So moving on to behaviour then, um, so class charts you may have heard a little bit about, um, that's our reward and, and sanction policy and it's a really good opportunity for you to be able to find out live on your app for class charts how your child is doing in school throughout the day. Um, really good conversation starters over the dinner table. Um, why did you get um, an extra mile today in English? Tell me what you did. All of those icons that you see there on the screen are really good conversation openers and tell you which lessons and, and in which particular attributes your child is succeeding in and, and really displaying those positive things that need praising. And it's really great to see students really proud of the fact that they're collecting um, different, uh, different awards for, for positives in their first term and, and how they really try and avoid the negatives, uh, the vast majority. So just going to the final two slides, thinking about transport, bus passes are not administered through school, they are through Bradford um, and they have to stick to their allocated bus please. Um, they, they drop students in the lay by before school, um, but there's pickups there um, as, as, it, as it says on the screen. 
all buses have CCTV and of course at the moment masks um, need to be worn but we'll see what situation we're at in September at the minute. There is a school related pass for the train um, but please again that's not done through school that's done through Northern Rail. And then finally last couple of slides from me and um, I was wanting to skip onto this one a couple of slides ago but I eat at school. The food here is amazing, um, really nutritious. There's lots of different offers available throughout the week. It's very varied. Your um, child will be having cashless catering and that in most cases is a card. So they won't be able to buy any food at IGS. So please don't send um, them with any money, but make sure they do have credit on their account or a packed lunch on the first day in September. And for those of you who take packed lunches, there is a supervised area and um, designated classrooms and rooms available for students to eat their packed lunch in. Um, OK, finally, then a quick plug from the Parent Teacher Association, the PTA. That's a really important organisation. And uh, Mrs Pennell earlier described the Meet the Tutor evening um, within the first term, but also a quick plug that we do normally have a meet and mingle evening, a really informal social event. In normal times, it has been um, a cup of tea or coffee or light refreshment um, or maybe even of alcoholic variety. Um, in the library um, of an evening for you to get a chance to meet year seven tutors and Mrs Walsh as head of year seven and Mrs Varley. Um, that may have to be um, virtual this year but it, it may well go ahead but I would urge you to come along to that because it's a really great opportunity to get to know other parents um, of children perhaps in, in your child's uh, form. Okay that's me done so we're going to ask about um, whether there's any questions that you particularly want to ask. I will have a look at the Q&A. Um, I will have a look at the Q&A now and I will pass across to Mrs Walsh, who is head of year seven. Welcome, Mrs Walsh. Thank you very much, Ms Bishop. My name is Kath Walsh. I will be your, your son daughter's head of year in September. I have just taken my first lot of silver ties through and waved them off just a few weeks ago. I have to say I waved them off feeling really quite sad and it has taken me a little while to fight, to feel the excitement of yet another set to bring up. I really, really, really look forward to meeting the young people who will start in September. I love to watch them grow from quite anxious, worried young people into the fabulous young adults that we managed to produce in IGS. So please, if you do have any queries, any worries, contact the transition email and I do look forward to welcoming you all in September, hopefully in person. Thank you. OK, everybody, and uh, back to me uh, just to finish up here. Um, I hope that was as informed as you had hoped it would be. There's lots of information there. This will be recorded and, and put on the YouTube channel so you can um, watch it again. Um, I just wanted to uh, thank all the presenters there. It's not easy um, trying to manage your screen and, and, uh, and deliver a presentation to so many people uh, this evening as well. So, so thank you to you all. I just wanted to thank all the parents as well, really. I know we've been all working through very difficult times and your perseverance and has been has been fantastic. And just wanted to say, make sure you keep passing any questions through to us. And the letter about which tutor group you're in, as has been said, will come out this week. We're just doing the final checks on it today. And um, so that should be out shortly. And I know that's an exciting time for everybody. And um, so please um, keep uh, keep safe and um, have a wonderful summer. Um, and although the start of the year will be slightly delayed due to the, the testing that we need to do, um, then, uh, you know, we will get the students in uh, as fast as we can and get them underway with their career um, at uh, IGS. And I'm sure it'll be an incredibly successful one. Um, so thank you very much for your time. Um, I'm going to end this presentation here um, and I look forward to meeting all your children and yourselves um, in September, hopefully, if we can get uh, everybody together um, for various events and so on. So thank you ever so much for your time. Uh, good evening.